we are going to get started. Um, before we get started, I just wanted to make a few um, housekeeping announcements. Um, if you have any questions, you can submit them through the chat window while we're presenting or through the Q&A function. Um, you can submit it in uh, Ukrainian and we will use Google Translate to um, respond. I, we will be recording this webinar. This webinar is being recorded and we will share the recording um, tomorrow with you tomorrow and the slides as well. Um, I will be giving the presentation in English and Anna Danilova, our Crossref ambassador, will be translating for me. Um, so you will hear the webinar both in English and in Ukrainian. Uh, my colleague Vanessa Fairhurst is here as well, and, uh, and she will be answering the questions while, while we are uh, presenting. Thank you, Vanessa. Um, and uh, we um, ask that you keep the questions to the participation reports. If you have other questions um, that are not pertaining to participation reports, you can submit them to um, support at crossref.org. That is probably probably the best uh, thing to do, but we will be uh, answering any questions to do with participation reports today. Доброго дня. Ми просимо вас всі питання писати або в чат, або за допомогою QA кнопки. А також пані Ванеса Ферхус буде відповідати на питання протягом вебінару у віконці чату. Якщо у вас є питання, не пов'язані з темою нашого сьогоднішнього вебінару, можливо, найкращим шляхом буде, якщо ви їх надійшлите на емейл служби підтримки Кросрефу, це support.crossref.org. Okay, so uh, why don't we get started? So thank you again for joining our Participation Reports webinar. Um, as I mentioned, my name is Anatole Winska and I'm a Member Experience Manager here at Crossref. I work uh, as part of the Member and Community Outreach Team and it's my pleasure to talk to you today about Participation Reports. Всім доброго дня. Як я вже казала, мене звати Анна Толвінська. Я а, сьогодні буду представляти вам вебінар стосовно інструменту від Crossref Participation Reports. Uh, so today I will show you how you can easily track what metadata you're registering with Crossref, why you should be checking the report regularly, and how to interpret the reports. Сьогодні ми вам покажемо, як легко і швидко подивитися, які типи даних ви завантажуєте в Crossref, статистику по цим даним і як це правильно трактувати. And I'm hoping to run these webinars uh, regularly. Um, we try to run them um, every month um, and mostly in English, but we are trying this um, uh, webinar today in Ukrainian, and I think uh, there will be another one in Russian and in other languages. Um, and we do record all of the webinars, and they're all available on our um, Crossref webinar page. Ми стараємося проводити ці вебінари щомісяця. Будемо, можливо, старатися і частіше. А більшість з них проводиться англійською мовою, але ми спробуємо, як сьогодні піде українською, можливо, будуть і російською також. Запис сьогоднішнього вебінару і презентація будуть доступні з завтрашнього дня. So, I'll go ahead and get started now by telling you a bit more about the reports. So, what are the reports? They are a place where you can check what metadata you're registering with Crossref. They are open and free to use by anyone. They allow you to track the levels of metadata over time. This is handy if you're using service providers or another uh, company to uh, make your deposits, it, and especially if you're not directly responsible for registering the metadata yourself. Отже, що це за інструмент? Цей інструмент дозволяє побачити, які метадані ви завантажуєте в Crossref, бачити по ним статистику. Також це дуже е, корисно для тих, хто є посередником е, в завантаженні метаданих. And they allow members to see how they measure up to other members and see where the gaps are that they can be improved. 
Крім того, ви можете бачити статистику по метаданим у порівнянні також із іншими членами Кросреф. І все це загалом абсолютно безкоштовно. Sorry, I'm looking for my mouse. Uh, here we go. <laughs> so um, you may be wondering why we developed these reports. Well, they came about mainly because we've been hearing from our members um, that they're not always sure what metadata they're registering with us. Um, so we decided to make it easier for our members and ourselves to see uh, what metadata was being registered. Um, and this Data has always been available or for some time uh, via our REST API, but not everyone knew how to query our API and it's not very user friendly um, and it's more geared at machines, so not as easy to use. And, oh, sorry, go ahead, Anna. <laughs> Отже, для чого був створений цей інструмент? Раніше дуже часто отримували питання у службі технічної підтримки від людей, які не в курсі, які самі метадані вони вже завантажили, які не завантажили, яких не вистачає. І для того, щоб спростити роботу як для, як для користувачів CrossRef, так і для співробітників, був створений цей інструмент. Насправді раніше був також інтерфейс для того, щоб подивитися цю всю статистику, але ним було досить важко користуватися, не всі це знали, не всі вміли ним користуватися. Ну і так виявилося простіше для всіх і набагато наглядніше. Yep. So another reason for the participation reports was that it made it easier for our members to see what's missing and to fill in the gaps and to update their metadata. Um, and lastly, the reports also allow our members to track their progress to see if what they have updated is actually being reflected in Crossref. Um, so um, it does really help you to know uh, what metadata you're registering with us. Окрім того, що е, інструмент дозволяє побачити, які саме дані ви завантажуєте, яких не вистачає, також там є можливість слідкувати безпосередньо за е, прогресом у порівнянні е, з часом місяць тому, наприклад, або півроку тому. Це робиться легко і зручно, і все знаходиться в одному місці. Okay, so, um, so where does the metadata in Crossref end up? Um, so because Crossref's metadata is standardized and machine readable, it is very useful to many different organizations that make your content more discoverable. And this graph shows some of the examples or this chart shows some of the examples of the different um, organizations and services that use your metadata. Так як дані, що знаходяться у базі CrossRef, стандартизовані і можуть використовуватися різними іншими користувачами, то поле для можливостей використання і можливостей відображення, воно надзвичайно велике. І перед вами на малюнку є деякі області, де метадані з бази CrossRef можуть використовуватися. So when you're registering your metadata, it's also very important to keep in mind uh, that the metadata is correct, that there are no errors, uh, typos, etc. cetera. Коли ви завантажуєте метадані до бази даних CrossRef, ви повинні пам'ятати, що ці дані повинні бути, по-перше, коректними, без орфографічних помилок, без помилок у пунктуації, без зайвих якихось символів, без некоректних символів. All the fields that you, um, so it, you have to also make sure that the metadata is complete. So all of the fields that you can manage to deposit, not just the first author, but all of the authors, uh, publication dates, and anything that's not required. So um, anything optional that you can add. Крім того, ми завжди зауважуємо, що варто завантажувати якомога більше даних. 
якщо авторів декілька, вказуйте, будь ласка, всіх авторів, а не тільки першого. Всі можливі поля, які ви можете дізнатися їх значення, будь ласка, завантажуйте. Це дозволить підвищити видимість ваших матеріалів у світовій мережі. And up to date, make sure that it's all up to date. Uh, talk to uh, the service providers or if you're using vendors or, another, or if your production team is doing the deposits, um, just make sure that all of your metadata is up to date. Uh, updates are free of charge. Um, and sometimes you may not even be aware of what you want your uh, vendor or service provider or your production team to register. So it's really good to keep um, communication lines open between you and whoever is doing the registration. Крім того, якщо не безпосередньо ви займаєтесь завантаженнями метаданих, будь ласка, впевніться, що ці дані є актуальними, своєчасними. Наприклад, якщо були внесені якісь зміни до організації авторів або помінялися самі автори, будь ласка, виконуйте повторне завантаження. Це безкоштовно, таким чином ви будете самі в курсі і користувачі також будуть в курсі, що всі ваші дані, вони актуальні. And once you update your metadata, you can expect it to, uh, to be updated in participation reports in about 24 hours, and all updates are free of charge. Крім того, всі оновлені Інформації в інструменті Participation Reports, вони безкоштовні, і а, система їх завантажує протягом приблизно 24 годин. Окей, okay. so now um, let's navigate to the Participation Reports and see how they actually work. Uh, so I'm going to click on... Okay, so, um, so, як це все працює? Зараз ми з вами завантажимо сторінку і побачимо. So when you land on uh, the participation reports page, this is the URL, um, you will see a search box where you can type in your organization name. Коли ви заходите на головну сторінку інструменту, перше, що ви побачите, це поле, в якому ви uh, вносите назву своєї організації. Наприклад, в даному випадку у нас це буде Національна академія наук. And then uh, when you click on the name, you end up on the main page of the report for that particular organization. And you will see 10 key elements, um, the name of the organization, the total registered content items, and the 10 key metadata elements that we think are important to make your uh, content more discoverable. Отже, перед вами буде основне поле із uh, даними для організації, на якому будуть найголовніші, на наш погляд, 10 пунктів, що характеризують повноту відображення метаданих у базі Crossref. Okay. So um, let me start at the top. So um, if you're ever uh, made a mistake, uh, for example, if this is not the member that you wanted to see, or if you um, typed in the name incorrectly, you can always go back to find a member and that will take you back to the search box and then you can you know, type in the correct name um, and end up on the report again. Отже, найперше, що варто зауважити, якщо ви неправильно набрали назву організації, ви завжди можете повернутися назад, натиснувши на кнопку в лівому верхньому кутку вікна «Find a member». Це вас переведе на початкову сторінку, де ви внесете організацію вже так, як правильно, і повернетесь назад. And then you will see the name of the organization here and total registered content items, which mean total registered DOIs. Um, and you will see the total here. Um, make sure that you do... Oh, sorry, go ahead, Anne. Перше, що ви побачите, це буде в правому верхньому кутку назва організації і цифра. Цифра, яка відображує загальну кількість зареєстрованих індексів DOI. 
Um, and this is reflected by the uh, date uh, selection drop down here on the right. Um, if you're looking at current content, uh, the total registered DOIs for the current content is ten, over 10,000 DOIs. And current content means any publications or any content that was registered in the, la in the last, uh, in the year that we're currently in and two previous years. So 2020, 2019, 2018. If I change the drop down to back file, which is anything prior to 2018, um, you will ch see the number change drastically to over 135,000 DOIs. So um, depending on where you, um, you know, change the date range, you will see the total registered content items change. Якщо вам потрібно подивитися кількість індексів і статистику за більш давній період, архівні роки, наразі це 2017 і більш раніше, ви вибираєте пункт «Бекфайл». З правому верхньому кутку ви побачите, як цифра змінилася. Наразі зареєстровано архівних індексів дою у Національної академії наук 135 тисяч, більше 135 324. Тобто цифри змінюються відповідно до того, які часові рамки ви покажете. And all time combines everything. So current content and back file content make up the total DOI um, uh, registered in Crossref for this particular member. І відповідно вкладка за весь час all time це буде вказувати скільки індексів Долей зареєстровано взагалі за весь абсолютний час перебування членами Crossref цією організацією. Okay. Um, then on the other side, I'm going to go back to current content, but on the other side you will see a drop-down menu for content types. So this particular uh, member only has journal articles uh, that they're registering for current content, so we don't see um, differences here. But if we look at another member, um, for example, Hindawi, um, they have, um, for uh, all time, let's see, they have different content types. So um, it's not always just journal articles that you can look at, but books, conference papers, and journal articles as well. Наразі також можна подивитися окрему статистику по різним типам а, занесених даних. Наприклад, у Національної академії наук ми бачили тільки статті журналів Journal Articles. Але якщо ми подивимося, наприклад, на іншу організацію Hindavi Limited, то ви можете побачити, що вони також завантажували книжки і а, матеріали конференції. Це все також можна побачити в, за допомогою інструменту Special Reports. And in the middle, there is a search box that where you can type in the journal name to look at just one individual journal at a time. So if you are an editor of a journal and you just want to see what your journal metadata coverage is like, you can just type in the journal name itself uh, or select it from a drop down. There are uh, multi, uh, multiple uh, titles for this particular publisher, and you can just select it and see what the metadata coverage is for that particular journal. І якщо вам потрібна інформація лише по одному журналу, який видається певним видавцем, то ви його вносите в поле посередині. Таким чином ви отримаєте статистику лише для цього одного а, журналу. Ви можете як набрати повністю назву журналу, так і вказати лише першу букву і вибрати відповідну назву з випадаючого списку. Great. And now we will be uh, looking at each one of these particular um, uh, key elements. So we'll start with references. References are the citations that you can register um, as part of your metadata deposit. 
So they are your article's references. And if you deposit them, uh, this number will show how many DOIs or what percentage of DOIs or content items have references registered as part of the metadata deposit. So in this particular case, if we're looking at all time, 84% um, of the 240 5,000 DOIs have references registered. So um, Hindawi is doing a good job registering references for almost every article that they have. А тепер розглянемо детально окремі пункти, які перед вами. Почнемо з пункту референс. Це списки літератури, які ви завантажуєте до ваших статей. Конкретно зараз. А ви можете побачити, що 84% всіх завантажених індексів доїв зареєстрованих компанією Hindavi мають завантажені списки літератури. Тобто 84% від 245 тисяч. And if you ever um, end up on the participation report and you forget what you're exactly looking at, you can hover over the little eye icon and it will tell you exactly what the uh, key element is, uh, why it's important, where you can learn more and how you can improve um, and uh, update your metadata with this particular element. And in any case, if you forgot that цей ключовий елемент перед вами означає, ви можете навести курсор на літеру І справа вгорі над кожним елементом, і там ви побачите опис елементу, також зазначення, чому він важливий, де можна почитати більше, як можна покращити статистику по цьому елементу. Um, so next up we have open references and open references just means that all of the references uh, these ones that we looked at here are open across all of our APIs, services, they're open to the public, uh, anyone can query on the references, they're not uh, limited to anyone. And if you find that your, um, if you find that your uh, report says zero percent, we can easily um, make that switch and open them for you. Just let us know um, uh, and we can make that change for you because uh, if it does say zero, then they are limited to only specific um, um, uh, organizations that get uh, the references and not everyone um, and not across all of our APIs and services. So it's always good to, um, to uh, monitor that and let us know. Um, and that change can be made really quickly um, within 24 hours. Next up, we have ORCID identifiers. Sorry, Anna, I forgot. Наступний пункт від Open References. Це означає, що в даному випадку всі 100% від завантажених списків літератури, вони відкриті для всіх пошукових систем. Якщо ви зайшли і у вас ця цифра становить на 100% а нуль, Це насправді дуже легко змінити. Варто лише написати листа у службу технічної підтримки в Crossref і ваша література становиться відкрита для пошукових систем. Окей, great. Um, so next up we have ORCID identifiers. Um, ORCID identifiers uh, help authors disambiguate um, their uh, first name and last name, if, for example, it's very common. They also help organizations uh, see, um, and also authors uh, are able to have publications auto-updated on their ORCID profiles quite easily uh, by Crossref if they give us permission. So it's really important to ask your authors if you're not already asking them to um, get ORCID identifiers and then register those ORCIDs in Crossref. Um, uh, so um, in this particular case, 49% of all of the 245,000 DOIs uh, that Hindawi has have at least one ORCID identifier registered as part of the metadata. Про важливість індексу ОРКД ми вже також говорили багато. По-перше, це дозволяє організаціям бачити інформацію про авторів, 
крім того, якщо, е, якщо автори бажають, то можна е, зробити так, що е, із фази даних Кросреф автоматично буде підтягуватися інформація про його статті. Наразі е, цифра 49% означає, що е, із 245 тисяч індексів завантажених е, 49% мають хоча б один індекс uh, ID. And next up we have funder registry ID, uh, which is another persistent ID to identify the funder name of um, that funded your research. So it's really important if you collect that information, sometimes publishers collect it in the acknowledgement sections. Um, it's important to pass it on to Crossref so that we can have it in a uh, usable standardized way. Um, a lot of funders like to see where their funding dollars are going, so this is just an easier way for them to track that. Um, along with funder registry IDs, we have funding award numbers or grant numbers that you can also submit. So these two things pertain to funding data and they're really important as well. Наступні два пункти – це Funder Registry IDs і Funding Award Numbers. Це, по-перше, індекси спонсуючих організацій, а також номер гранту. Часто цими даними користуються самі спонсуючі організації для того, щоб бачити статистику по надходженню коштів і їх витратам. And uh, next up, we have Crossmark Enabled. Crossmark is a Crossref service that allows our members to show whether the content has changed since publication. Um, it has to be a significant change, like a big correction, update, or retraction. Um, and you can indicate that through the metadata. It's, it's really important. Um, uh, this particular publisher, Hindawi, is not participating in Crossmark. That's why you see um, a 0%. Uh, but if you are interested in Crossmark or if you're registering Crossmark metadata, um, this would, you know, your percentage would be higher here. Uh, Crossmark is free of charge to use for our members. We used to have a fee associated with it, but we have dropped the fee in January. So it's now to completely free to register Crossmark metadata. So if your content has changed since publication, this is a good service, free service to use as a member. А наступний пункт це Crossmark. Crossmark це сервіс від Crossref, який дозволяє показувати вашим читачам, чи дані були змінені від часу їх публікації. при цьому мається на увазі, що зміни були досить великі з січня цього року. цей сервіс безкоштовний став Раніше він був платний, зараз uh, цю плату перебрали, не можна користуватися безкоштовно. Uh, організація Хіндаві ним не користується, тому ви бачите там 0%. Okay. Uh, next up we have text mining URLs. Text mining URLs are full text URLs that you can register as part of your metadata deposit in Crossref to make it easier for um, researchers that are text and data mining your content to find the URLs. So um, of course you can make an agreement with um, the researchers themselves, but to enable for quick querying, um, you can deposit the full text URL for text and data mining in Crossref. Uh, наступний пункт, text mining URL. Uh, Це, якщо ви завантажуєте разом з іншими метаданими, повний текст вашої статті. Часто це полегшує пошук самим користувачам. Okay, and next up we have license URLs. Um, there are different types of licenses that you can register to indicate whether a your content is open access. So if you want to do a CC BY license or a, uh, any type of copyright license as well can be registered so that your readers or anyone querying for the metadata can see whether the content is or isn't open access. You can also put in licenses for text and data mining. So if you want the researcher that is text and data mining to see what they can do 
with the content that they're text and data mining. You can put in a text and data mining license as well in Crossref. Um, in this case, Hindawi is um, doing most of their content has a license um, uh, included because 99% of the 245, over 245,000 have licenses. So we would encourage you if you do have licenses to just uh, include them in your metadata. Наступний пункт license URLs – це інформація про ваші ліцензії. Наприклад, ліцензія відкритого доступу, ліцензія для копіювання вашого контенту. Наприклад, у Хіндалі майже всі тексти, вони мають ліцензію, що або обмежують, або дозволяють використання контенту. And next up, the last type of URL is similarity check URL, which is another full text URL that you need to register if you're participating in similarity check, which is a service that helps you determine whether there's any potential plagiarism uh, that's happening in a manuscript. Um, if um, you are a uh, part of similarity check we offer the service at a discounted rate and uh, one of the requirements is that you deposit full text urls for the purposes of indexing by authenticate so uh, the company that um, provides the tool um, turn it in um, and the service authenticate um, uh, will index your full text for the purposes of checking against it Ще один пункт, пов'язаний з URL, це Similarity Check URL. Що він назначає? Це пункт для перевірки на антиплагіат. Отже, сам URL – це посилання на результат перевірки. Власне, сама перевірка на антиплагіат – це ви надсилаєте повний текст до сервісу TurnedIn. Ви його туди завантажуєте і, по-перше, спочатку виконується перевірка для вас, а потім цей сервіс використовує ваш повний текст для порівняння з якимись іншими користувачами. And last but not least, we have abstracts. Um, abstracts are really important to provide a more of a context for your readers. So if you do have abstracts, um, we encourage you to register them as part of the metadata deposit. Um, your content will be more discoverable through that um, as well. Um, so if you do have abstracts, um, you can register them uh, in Crossref. And all of the key elements that you saw here are, um, you can update them free of charge. So there, there's no extra charge if you want to, let's say, update all of your metadata with references or abstracts or ORCIDs or any of the following 10 elements. І останній, але не менш важливий пункт – це абстракт, це анотації. І якщо вони у ваших статей є, а частіше за все так і буває, то ми запевняємо, що найкраще буде їх також завантажувати до бази даних Crossref-у. Окей, і я думаю, що... Let's go back to the presentation. Let's see. Oh, no, that's not the one. Oopsies. Thanks. Cancel. Zaraz повернемося назад до презентації. I found it. I apologize. Technical difficulties. <laughs> Um, so I just took a screenshot of the um, participation reports that we were looking at. Um, this is proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, um, just in case, in case the live demo didn't work. Це скріншоти на випадок, якби не працювали попередні всі пункти. Um, and I just wanted to um, actually ask everyone, um, and you can do it either now or um, you can do it later, but if you'd like to take a look at your own participation report um, and just see maybe one thing that you're doing like really well at. Um, so for example, if you navigate to your participation report and we can put in the, maybe Vanessa, if you could um, put in the URL in the chat window, 
for anyone that um, uh, might be helpful to um, share the URL of the participation reports in the chat window. But you can do this now or you can do it um, you know, on your own time. But if you could just see um, one area where you're doing really well. So if it's like references at you know, 50% or 100% or even 20%, um, if everything else is zero, maybe you can just write um, in the chat window the one thing that you're doing well at after you look at your report. Um, so I'm going to give everyone a minute just to do that right now. Um, so if everyone could just take um, a look at their report and um, let us know, you know, whether it's references or abstracts or similarity check URLs, um, just type in one thing in the chat um, that you're doing um, uh, good at. Your Mám propojenou mám nastupnou aktivnost. Zajít na site, který zaraz znachodíte v čatě, to je Instrument Participation Report. Zajít u svou statistiku a podívat se, jaký z těch deseti punktů u vás představuje nejkrásnější po výsledkům. Když vy podívíte si informaci, zaprošujeme napsat rezultaty do čat. Подивимося, які у вас результати. Це можна зробити зараз за бажанням, можна зробити, буде пізніше. That's great. Um, we got um, Tatiana. Fantastic. 100%. Very good. And Irina as well. Uh, references at 80%. Fantastic. And 99% for back files. Fantastic. Чудові результати, як і 80% для списків літератури і від Тетяни Борисової 100% взагалі And this is a good activity to do um, you know, uh, from time to time to check your participation report um, because things can change um, especially if you're using uh, another uh, company to do your deposits. Um, sometimes uh, if you switch companies, the next, the next vendor might not know whether you want them to continue to register references or similarity check URLs. And um, sometimes that falls off um, and is being not um, submitted to us. Okay, so I'm uh, going to move on now, but keep checking your participation reports and um, see how you're doing. I have a few reminders about the next steps. Um, so uh, make sure that you, uh, and maybe I don't have the notes for this, uh, but I keep checking your report um, on a regular basis. And I think, Anna, you might have to um, just translate the, the rest because I, I didn't look at my notes here. So I'm not sure exactly what, um, or did we lose Anna? I think we may have lost Anna. Um, uh, it's my connection, sorry. No problem. Uh, I was just wondering whether you could read out the next steps for me. Um, that would be fantastic. Sure. Uh, should I read them now? Yes, 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 because I... <laughs> Thanks. In Ukrainian, in English? In Ukrainian, yeah. Uh, отже, ми вам рекомендуємо регулярно перевіряти ваші дані за допомогою цього інструменту. Uh, якщо ви побачили, якихось даних не вистачає в цій статистиці, uh, будь ласка, завантажуйте їх і... Uh, 
І, звісно, як ми завжди кажемо на всіх наших конференціях і семінарах, то реєструйте якомога більше даних, які ви можете завантажити. Great, thank you so much. And that is the end of the presentation. So uh, we can open it up for questions now. Um, so we, um, you can submit them either through the chat or if you raise your hand, we can unmute you if you'd like to ask the question directly um, in um, Ukrainian to Anna um, and um, we'll try to answer your questions. Um, and Anna, I don't know if you have access to the Q&A, but there is a question in Ukrainian that came in through the Q&A. Uh, it's uh, thanks for new service. Okay. It's not a question. Okay. It's, uh, it's, uh, thanks for new service. Вы можете зараз задати свои питання у чат украинскую або английскую, як вам буде зручніше. Якщо українською, то я перекладу, якщо англійською, будь ласка. Okay, uh, so um, how to add text mining URLs to metadata through Metadata Manager? Um, I think uh, I'm not as familiar with, um, I believe that you can add text mining URLs to through the Metadata Manager, but I will have to check with our support team. Um, I know that the Metadata Manager sometimes is a little finicky and doesn't um, um, throw some errors in, but I believe that you can add text mining URLs through the metadata manager. There is a field for that. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, Vanessa, if you know. I think there is. I'm not entirely sure. Um, I will ask um, and let you know. Maybe someone will get back to me. Do we have any other questions while we're looking that up? Um, is it possible to see stats for a particular journal within a particular publisher? This is from Irina. Yes, um, it is possible to see stats for a particular journal within a particular publisher. Let me see if I can go out um, and um, navigate to the report again so you can see. Um, so if we look up, for example, um, we can check Springer because they have a lot of articles. So this is a particular publisher, Springer, and, and all of the members in Crossref, and we have over 12,000 members, um, are open and you can check their reports here. So any publisher that you want to check, you can. So basically you would type in the journal name here. So you would have to know, you know the, the name of the journal, the title of the journal. Um, so, for example, I just did, I started with an A and it gives me a drop down of all of the Springer journals that start with an A. But you can, you know, you can start with a J and you can check um, exactly where, uh, what journal you want to look at. And then if you select it, let's say you find the Journal of Nuclear Cardiology and you select it, it will only show um, the percentages for that particular journal, right? So this journal, Journal of Nuclear Cardiology, has 88% references for the current content. Right now we're looking at current content, so anything registered in 2020, 2019, and 2018. Um, and um, so the coverage for the current content is the following. They have open references for everything. 88% uh, uh, of all of the DOIs for the current content for that journal, and we don't know what the total DOIs for that journal is, we're not seeing the totals for that, but 88% of all the DOIs deposited for that journal have references, 2% have ORCIDs, 93% um, have Crossmark metadata, 100% uh, have text mining URLs and so on, um, and no abstracts for this one. 
Um, but that, yeah, you can definitely look up any, you know, any member. And if you want to see any Ukrainian, um, you know, members, um, and especially if you know their name, not every Ukrainian member's name starts with Ukrainian. <laughs> um, so I just selected this for um, an example's sake. But yeah, you can uh, take a look at any um, of your own or any member in Crossref's metadata. And I think there are a few uh, questions, or I'm not sure if there are. One more, actually. Uh, the journal has 97% uh, of uh, references and 97% uh, of uh, abstracts, uh, but uh, they say that uh, they uploaded uh, everything. So uh, what can be a problem here with the visualization? Uh, if they sent, send us an email to support at crossref.org and specify the journal name um, uh, and the uh, and the member name um, so that we can look into it, sometimes not every article has references. Uh, it might be, you know, a letter to the editor, for example, that doesn't have references. So that 3% might be uh, just content that does not have references included, but we can take a deeper look if they send us an email to support at crossref.org and ask this question in, in the email. We'll get back to them. Pana Makita, you can write in the support of the technical support and they will give you an answer to provide this information. Іноді буває, що, наприклад, у статті немає списку літератури, тоді така розбіжність у пару відсотків можлива. Але це все можна перевірити, лише написавши листа до служби підтримки. And I also wanted to add that um, it's okay if your report is all zeros, it's, it's a place to start. So, um, I just want everyone to be aware of what they're registering in Crossref because not a lot of our members just don't know. They think they might be registering it. So checking it is a good place to start. So don't be afraid if you have all zeros and just think about maybe starting, you know, today or in a month or so and registering more metadata. You don't have to worry about, oh, do I have to do all the back files? It would be nice, but um, starting, you know, fresh, just starting um, uh, just thinking about your future and making your content more discoverable with more metadata, um, just making a plan for adding more metadata in the future is good. And the main thing is that if you have all of it on 0%, it's only Тимчасово ви а, вже будете знати, яких даних вам не вистачає в цій статистиці, над чим треба попрацювати і чим зайнятися. I have the answer for Tatiana, um, who asked before about text mining URL through Metadata Manager. Um, so I can share my screen and just show where that is, if that's useful. Yes, thank you, Vanessa. Uh, do I need to stop sharing? I think I need to stop sharing. <laughs> I just stopped sharing. Okay. Can you see my screen? Yes. Yes. Okay. So you would go to new record in this example. We'll start a new article. There's all these different fields. You can add information. And if you go to license and go down here, you can put in a licensed URL and you can select from this drop down list text and data mining and you can add that and then add your license URL and you can click that if you want to add any more licenses to it and that's as simple as that and you would add in the rest of your information and then click submit so I hope that answers the question um Anna do you want to translate that uh, so, Отже, для того, щоб завантажити, завантажити посилання для завантажити посилання текст. Ой, щось у мене. А, лоу. 
Hello, do you hear me? Hello, sorry. Oh, sorry. Do you want to repeat that, Vanessa, maybe? Uh, or Yes, no. I'll repeat that. Um, so when you go into the article, you can add in lots of different metadata fields, including the title and the DOI and all of these types of things. And there are many different and if you go down to license, so if you click this drop down on the license, вам потрібно розвернути вкладку ліцензія license. You will see there is an option to add a license URL. Тут буде опція додати посилання на ліцензію. And you can click what this would apply to. So there is version of record, accepted manuscript, and there is one for text and data mining. Тут можна додати пункт, до якого відноситься ця Це посилання, це або текст дата майнін, або до манускрипту тощо. And if you have multiple license URLs, you can add a new one, and I will add another, another tab. Якщо у вас декілька ліцензій, ви можете додати іншу, натиснувши на кнопку «Одню». Okay. I'm going to stop sharing my screen now so you can go back to your presentation, Anna. Okay, uh, I'm going to share my screen. There was a question from a member, um, Irina, um, is asking whether we have a list of all Ukrainian publishers. Um, I can send you that list. We don't have it anywhere on our website. I, I will have to pull a report. Um, so I will um, get back to you um, uh, through email on that. We can't, um, let me see if I'm sharing my screen. Oh, sorry, sharing. Um, can you see my screen now? Hopefully it should yes. say members with open references. Yes. Uh, we don't, so we don't have a specific list of all the members who are Ukrainian with open references or with uh, registering references. Um, but um, on our website, you can see who has uh, opened their references. And I think there was a list, um, Vanessa, correct me if I'm wrong. Is there a list of members who are registering references or do I have to um, pull, um, I think an API query to show that, right? If, um, I think it would be an API query, but I'm not entirely sure. Okay. Um, actually on this uh, report, um, it shows whether they are depositing current references. So if you see, um, um, you know, the, the word true, that means that they're depositing current references, their references are open and they're depositing current references. I can send you a link to this um, report and I'll share it in uh, the chat window right now. Um, so you could potentially, if the list of Ukrainian members is not too long, you could like look them up, you know, um, and, um, oops, um, and check on this report basically. Let's say, yeah. So for example, this uh, particular member is depositing and their references are open. So um, if you go to this report and you put in um, a keyword like Ukrainian or um, uh, a keyword like, um, if you know the name of the particular member, you can look that information up on this report. I hope that helps. Okay, any other um, questions about the participation report? Uh, we are coming up close to the hour, um, so we'll give it another. Oh, um, Vanessa said that there are a couple of questions in the Q and A, and I don't know if you can see the Q and A um, from Alexi. Oh. Um, yes, I found it. Uh, it's, uh, he asks uh, if there is a possibility to upload abstracts uh, on um, two or more languages. Uh, I believe so, uh, but I'm not 100% sure, so I will ask um, and we will try to get that answer for you before the end. 
Олексій, ми постараємося дізнатися і відповісти вам. If we don't get the answer before the end of the webinar, um, Alexi, I will send that um, to you, um, the answer to you. If we don't get the answer before the end of the webinar, then we will send you the electronic post, as soon as we will know exactly. Okay, and I just wanted to remind everyone that we are recording this session and we will um, share the recording and the slides um, with you tomorrow. Um, so you will have this um, and we hope, um, yeah, to run another session again um, in the future. Um, Нагадуємо, що цей вебінар був записаний. Завтра ми надійшлемо вам всю інформацію стосовно запису. Це будуть також і слайди українською мовою. Ви їх всі отримаєте. Дякуємо вам за увагу. Сподіваємося, вам сподобалось. І ми будемо намагатись повторювати подібні заходи. And I just wanted to thank Anna Danilova, very much for the wonderful translation. Uh, we couldn't have done it without you. And Vanessa, thank you so much for um, taking care of the questions and being on the webinar as well. So thank you all and thank you for attending. Uh, thank you to all the great attendees. Uh, and thank you. Uh, it was uh, my pleasure uh, to work with you. Thank you for webinar. Bye, everyone.